Did y'all catch that article about a week ago uh, that said there's going to be a new species of spider descending upon the East Coast this summer? Anyone? Okay, some people have read it. Um, the article said that there's going to be spiders the size of a child's hand parachuting down from the sky. And uh, the article said just enough to scare the shit out of me, but it left a lot to be desired. So, just have a couple of questions. Uh, number one, what child's hand are we measuring for this? Is it a newborn? Is it one of those husky little third graders? Because I'm gonna need to know how scared to be. Uh, number two, when y'all say parachuting, do these motherfuckers have jam sports? Are they ripping a cord like, let's go boys, on some unsuspecting victim? Is that, could David Attenborough explain it to me? Because I feel like he's very calming, usually. Um, they, did, they did include one detail. They said, don't worry, <laughs> too late. Uh, don't worry, they have fangs that are too small to penetrate human skin. So biting won't be an issue. And um, I'm gonna be honest, I didn't even think about that, okay? <laughs> I was thinking about them parachuting out of the sky. <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> um, I know that we're not supposed to joke about the threat of nuclear war, but I think that if, if the timing worked out, if we could have that happen before the paratrooping spiders come in, I think that would be cool. Um, <laughs> Yeah, uh, it's a weird time we're living in. Um, people are really mad at technology. People are mad at their phones and their Alexas for listening to them. I'm being surveilled. <laughs> okay, they saw the live, laugh, love sign that you purchased for your kitchen. They know that you're not high risk. They know. Uh, <laughs> people get so upset. They're like, no, you don't get it. I was talking about needing new running shoes and then I got an ad for new running shoes. Oh no, how wildly convenient. Y'all are ungrateful. I think it's really nice that they pick out my ads for me. What? My algo though, um, short for algorithm, it's been, it's been slacking lately. Um, she keeps showing me ads for these like luxury brands, like $500 dresses. I'm like, babe, you're my phone. You know what's in that Chase banking app. What's not clicking? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, for my job, for my real job, not this clownery. Um, <laughs> I am a TV producer. I've been working in television for about a decade. Um, yeah, whatever, whatever. Um, <laughs> I've seen a lot of characters. I've met a lot of cool, interesting people. I worked on a little show called MTV True Life. You've heard of it. Um, and my episode that I worked on was True Life, I'm a Financial Dominatrix. Now, show of hands, who knows what that is? Oh, we got a couple? Okay, yeah. For those of you who don't, uh, this woman was paid by men to be mean to them. They say don't meet your heroes. <laughs> yeah. Um, I was a production assistant at the time, so I was responsible for typing up all of the notes of everything that happened on set. We followed her around for a week to just like see her life. And so I'm sitting there and I'm like, goddess just called this man her little baby pig boy and he paid her a hundred dollars. Goddess just kicked a man in the balls repeatedly and he signed over the deed to his house. A man is paying Goddess for the privilege of sleeping in a tiny dog cage next to her bed. And by the way, I am not kink shaming, I am kink celebrating, okay? Um, I'm an assistant at the time, so I'm making pennies. And I'm sitting there and I'm like, oh, okay, I got into the wrong field. Like, I gotta... <laughs> I gotta do this. <laughs> so I contacted her after we wrapped and I said, Goddess, you've gotta teach me everything you know. You gotta take me under your wing, you know? And long story short, um, if you're interested in being a little baby pig boy, just see me after the show. <laughs> we have a Google Doc sign up. <laughs> Y'all ever lie? Any, any liars? We all lie. Yeah, we, it's a fact of life. We all lie from time to time. Um, when I was single, I used to tell a lot of guys that I did not have a gag reflex. <laughs> Just because I thought it sounded cool. And I bet it did. Um, but they found out pretty quickly that that was not true. Not that quickly, oh my God, disgusting. 
Um, it runs in the family. My mom is a massive exaggerator, which is just a really kind word for liar. Uh, I'll never forget when I was a freshman in college and she was meeting my freshman roommate for the first time. And I left them alone for a little bit, came back, and my roommate was like, oh, Britt, you never told us you worked for the Make-A-Wish Foundation. I was like, it's because I sure didn't. <laughs> And she quickly corrected me and said, no, remember the time we took that girl to Disney World? I said, mama, that was my cousin who was not ill at all, not terminally ill, not ill at all. Um, <laughs> that's not the same thing. And she said, dead in the eyes, well, we made her wish come true. So I think we got the spirit of the foundation. That's like saying you performed at the garden and you meant Olive Garden. It's not the same thing. <laughs> um, you know who lies a lot? Recently engaged couples. I, if I had a nickel for every time I saw one of those posts, I can't wait to marry my best friend. <laughs> That's not your best friend. <laughs> that is someone who is legally obligated to hang out with you for the rest of your life, okay? What's your threshold for a best friend? What does your real best friend think of that? Rachel's over here like, yeah, well, I taught her how to put a tampon in in summer camp and helped her through her parents' divorce, but I guess Brad, who she met on Hinge two years ago, is getting that top spot. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> not your best friend. That's someone you like banging like for the rest of your life. I don't know. Speaking of which, I mean front row. Um, <laughs> uh, I did, <laughs> sorry. I did get married uh, last, last August. Um, yes, thank you. <laughs> uh, try to keep it on the DL. I feel like being married kind of ages me a little bit. You know, married people, it's, it's different. It's just a different ball game. Um, we're 30, so we actually have a lot of friends who are married and married with kids. Uh, and it's, it's just a different life, you know? Uh, we were out to dinner with our, our good friends who have a kid uh, a couple weeks ago and they got a text in the middle of dinner from their parents who were babysitting. And the parents said, you know what? Leave the kiddo here overnight. You two just have fun, enjoy yourselves, pick them up in the morning. And these two looked at each other and they were like, oh, you know what that means? I was like, oh shit, are we gonna swing or like? <laughs> What's going on? And simultaneously, they were like, Advil PM, sleep in until 10. Okay. Okay, we're going OTC. We're going over the counter. All right. Here's something. We used to do Molly together. <laughs> so, you know, it's just a little, it's a little different. But no, probably one of those liquid gels, girl. Let's get crazy. <laughs> Yeah, it's just different. <laughs> um, I firmly believe that in every married couple, there's gotta be one person that really has their shit together, one responsible person. My husband and I fumbled a bag a little bit on that one. <laughs> um, I'm trying to be a professional clown and he's a personal trainer, so no one's got a real job. <laughs> um, <laughs> on our second date, we played a game of chicken and ended up with matching tattoos. I don't know if you're familiar with the game of chicken, but someone's got a duck at the last second. We did not. Um, being married, I, I kind of feel like we are like, if Scooby-Doo and Shaggy got married to each other, I'll be like, Zoink Scoop, we gotta do our taxes. And he's like, raw, raw, raggy. And then we both get high and eat a bunch of snacks, and neither of us do our taxes. <laughs> you gotta have a Velma. It's, it's just, we don't. <laughs> we don't have a Velma. <laughs> I gotta say one thing about the Kim Kanye thing, and then I'll never make a joke about it for the rest of my life, but okay. What Kanye's doing, it's not cool, right? It's, that's fucked up, I, I you know, concede to that. But did anyone look at that relationship when those two got together and said, this is probably gonna end really good and normal. <laughs> Any, anyone? No. I knew when they announced their divorce that they were never gonna be the kind of couple that is at their kid's college graduation, like, let's take a family picture for old time's sake. <laughs> Why don't we? They're, they were never gonna be that kind of divorce couple, and I know because my parents are divorced. Um, yes, I saw what happened to my parents, and I got married anyways, because I thought, 
maybe it'll be different for me. You know? <laughs> Delusional, no. Um, <laughs> whose parents are still married here? Oh my God, grow up. I mean, I guess it's cute, vintage, whatever. I don't know. <laughs> um, <laughs> We, we got married and I did decide to take his last name. Oh, sorry, feminism. Boop. <laughs> um, but I don't really love my last name. Uh, I use the stage name Brit Miggs, but my real name is Brittany Amignanelli, <laughs> which sounds like a stripper brand pasta. It's, I mean, which is great, but it's just very long and Italian. Um, all of my family, huge, huge Italian family. Uh, everyone's named after a saint, um, including me, our Lord and Savior, Britney Spears. Okay. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Um, my dad's name is Anthony, and his brother, my uncle's name is Michael. And he decided to name my two little brothers, Anthony Michael and Michael Anthony. <laughs> because I guess spaghetti and meatball was taken. <laughs> Mario and Luigi would have been too on the nose, right? It sounds like a lazy screenwriter was writing a mob movie and was like, eh, Anthony Michael, Michael Anthony, we'll fix it before we start filming, bada bing. <laughs> um, Y'all been so great, that's gonna be my time, but we have so much 